all right you beautiful people welcome back in the last video we learned about processes and threads and after that is clear we move on to what is synchronous programming and what is asynchronous programming and to understand that let's take a very simple example of buying tickets to a movie theater uh, as if it's the 90s you can just book it online but let's imagine that you're waiting in line for food or movie tickets so our aim is to do two tasks the first task is the get the movie tickets and the second task is to like pictures on instagram so these are just the two tasks you can do them in any order you want and the order in which you do both of these tasks depends whether you're doing asynchronously or synchronously so let's see both of the ways that it can be done so in the first manner or in the first way, what you can do is you can wait in the line and after you have only gotten the tickets, let's say you are waiting in line for seven minutes and after waiting in line for seven minutes, you actually got the movie tickets. And after getting the movie tickets, you just like the pictures on Instagram, which takes around three minutes or so a total of 10 minutes is spent on doing two tasks. And this is basically known as synchronous programming. If you do things sequentially one after the other, if you do a task or multiple tasks sequentially, then it is known as synchronous programming. But what will an asynchronous or a normal human being will do? He will wait in line and while he's waiting in line, he'll actually like pictures on Instagram. So let's say he's in waiting in line and while you're waiting in line, he starts using Instagram and that takes three minutes. Now, because he has already waited in line for three minutes and also like pictures on Instagram, if he subtract seven from three, we get four minutes because he doesn't need to wait all seven minutes because he has already spent three minutes waiting in line. So now he only has to spend four minutes to get his movie tickets and that is a total of seven minutes. So you can see how asynchronous programming saves time. And just to kind of give you another example and a more uh, logical way. So let's say we have synchronous and asynchronous over here and we need to do two tasks. The first task, we first complete the first task that is we send the request and get the response that is basically the completion of the first task and then we do the second task and the second task to get completed after we get the response too. And in asynchronous programming, we can just send the request one and request two and we don't need to wait for a response. We can just send both of these requests and whatever response comes first. So in the example over here, response one comes first and response two, but it can actually be like response two has come first and then the response one has come over here. All right, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. I hope you understood the main difference between synchronous and asynchronous programming and what it exactly is. Because if you're going to learn asynchronous programming or multi-threading or multi-processing, it's very easy to ignore this, but it's very important to actually learn what it is at the very core. Now, if you have been following along closely, you probably have a little bit of a confusion as to what is asynchronous programming, what is multi-threading and what is multi-processing. It's very, it gets very, very confusing because we are not able to differentiate between these different topics. So we are going to be learning about these topics and how they are different from each other in the next video. And I'll see you over there.